Hello, lads and lassies, and welcome back to the Out of Spec channel. I'm joined today by Brandon Flash with the most superhero name that I've met of a normal person. Glad to be here. <laughs> Thanks for coming back. Um, I know our, our audience has seen you before, but just in case they haven't, um, so you're a longtime EV driver, you have your own YouTube channel, and um, you, you really look into things all over the you know lifestyle of having an EV from purchasing, driving one, to charging them, of course. Yeah, basically, yeah. It is my lifestyle it keeps me very busy. Yes, yeah, it's a very busy lifestyle for sure. There's a lot to investigate, a lot to dig into, and that's kind of what we're doing today. Um, and we're going to be talking about the magic docks uh, from Tesla. So, as we know, Tesla drivers really get to benefit from the enti entire ecosystem that Tesla has. So they have. Uh, the cars that are, you know, great offers on the market. They have the software, and of course, they have the supercharger network that is relatively quite reliable and um, pretty, you know, expansive. So you have access to that as a driver. You can really count on public charging. And earlier this, uh, or was it last year? Um, I lose track of time sometimes. But Tesla announced, you know, Nax. So that's their North American charging standard, and that was in November, and they invited charging network operators and vehicle manufacturers to put the Tesla charging connector and charge point, now, now what they call NAX, um, on their equipment and their vehicles. So really opening up that technology that they've you know really enhanced in terms of charging uh, to auto manufacturers and other charging networks. And it has totally shifted the conversation on what is the future of public charging. And from then, you know, they opened up that standard, but now we're talking about Tesla actually opening up their network to EVs with a CCS connector adapter. And that is where these magic docks come in, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's yeah. pretty interesting. They announced the NAC standard and then basically nothing happened for six-ish months. They then came out with their magic dock sites. There was, I believe, 11 initially between New York and California. Uh, that was in February of 2023. And then those came out and then kind of nothing happened after that. They were just placed out there. People used them. There was some initial hurrah of sorts, but then they didn't roll out anymore. So nothing kind of happened. And then I believe it was April, May or so is when the automakers started committing to actually switching to NAC. So it was first Ford, then GM, and then everyone else kind of followed. And at that point, people kind of just thought that Magic Dock was dead because if automakers are switching, why does Tesla even need to do Magic Dock? Uh, as of recently, we've started seeing a few more pop up. There were two that popped up in Ontario last month. Uh, there was one early last month in Fort Worth, Texas, just random dot on the map showed up. Uh, now we're seeing them everywhere from Alaska to Mississippi, uh, just seemingly randomly popping up across the country. Some of them have been spotted as installed, but not live yet. And it's pretty interesting that they're back at it seemingly. Right, so there was this lull, the big announcement. We saw a few, um, you know, so we saw some folks also go out and use them. So they pull up with their, you know, CCS car, and then they're able to unlock the adapter. Like I know Out of Spec Dave and State of Charge did some videos on that, and it seemed to be a good experience, but then it leveled off. And now, like you said, we're seeing them, but without a big announcement. And uh, it seems like we're getting a lot of these, uh, this info from not even Tesla, but uh, users. Uh, taking this information, seeing these magic docs and then reporting it back on Twitter or even on the, what is that website called again? Supercharge.info. So yeah, Tesla hasn't said anything that I've seen. They've just started showing up. They show up on Tesla's uh, tesla.com slash find us map. If you filter to the uh, superchargers open to non-Teslas or if you go on the Tesla app, there's the charge a non-Tesla section of the app that you can actually then use to activate them. And they've just been popping up and then people have been seeing them because it is uh, visually obvious if you know what to look for that the holster of the charger is basically bigger to hold that adapter. So people are just seeing them, reporting them, and then they go live usually, I don't know, a few days, a few weeks after people see them typically. Right. And so that is something I wanted to note because they don't look dramatically different, right? Besides the fact that usually where the, you know, the connector is going, it's a bit bigger to hold that adapter, like you said. So keep an eye out, audience. If you are charging your Tesla, maybe you're pulling up to an unbeknownst to you magic dock. I want to talk about that point you made where 
you know, Tesla made this announcement that they were going to do this, but then Next came around and it kind of changed. Well, maybe just the automakers will switch to the to the Next technology and the other public charging networks will put the Tesla connectors on, kind of retrofit their stations, which also, you know, can only imagine the the havoc and that that kind of instilled in them. But now we're seeing magic docks, which means actually, you know, instead of the pressure towards NAX on everyone, Tesla is incorporating CCS onto their network, meaning that, you know, there's going to be more options for charging on the Tesla X, uh, network with CCS. So we're, are, are we surprised that, by this? Do, you know, we think it's kind of, I mean, it makes sense, more people charging on their network, more revenue. What do you think? Uh, I think it's a little bit strange because it, if anything, it's almost delaying the transition or making it a little bit weirder and less seamless of a transition for people. Uh, if the superchargers only had the NAX connector, I think it would be cleaner for people. But it, I mean, there is going to be this weird period, I think, of probably two to five years or so that there's going to be still a lot of CCS vehicles on the road. And then as new vehicles come out, they're going to have NACs. And then we're also going to have a lot of vehicles with adapters, but not everyone necessarily will have or carry an adapter or they could lose it. So there's going to be a lot of just weirdness for the next, I don't know, probably 10 years realistically fading out after the next five. So it's going to be painful. So I think anything to make it easier to some extent, even if it does add some level of confusion is probably for the best. And realistically, unless you know that it's a magic dock, it operates like a normal supercharger. So you can still use your own adapter. Um, so the GMs, the Fords, whatever, if they have some way to do plug and charge that they can just use the Tesla adapter or the Tesla NAX cable natively, then they can still just do that, use their own adapter. Or if they have a car with NAX, they can still just do that. No one's forcing them to use the CCS connection on the magic dock. That's true. And speaking of, you know, forcing and or refusal, you know, I wonder about the automakers that some of them have announced, yeah, we're moving to NAX and here's our plan. Maybe it's, you know, everything will be NAX or it'll be a staged process or a, yeah, come in stages. But some automakers, you know, haven't announced that and we don't really know what's going on behind the scenes, but perhaps they're just really, you know, sticking with CCS. Some, you know, like Nissan or sticking with Chatamo for a little bit. Um, but I mean, maybe do you think that's part of it that, you know, these automakers aren't ready to switch. So Tesla's still keeping it open for them so that their drivers can have options. Maybe I don't think Tesla is nice enough for that realistically, uh, but I think they do want the revenue. And I think there's likely some deals happening behind the scenes, uh, potentially with funding programs, not Nevi because Nevi does actually require CCS and is a competitive bid process in every state. So just to clear that up, they don't just automatically get Nevi funds by installing these. That's not how that works at all. Um, but I think there are some things going on that Tesla is being encouraged or incentivized to install these. Yeah, I, I think so too. And speaking of Nevi, I do want to highlight, I wanted to talk to you about this before, but I think it would be great if we could get together sometime and kind of break down Nevi. I think a lot of people understand like how it will benefit me as a consumer buying a car, but what are the charging networks having to consider when they're putting them up? Because I think the general consensus is like, yeah, take the funding, put it up. But there are a lot of requirements involved. So hopefully we can get together sometime and kind of like outline that to help um, everyone, the audience in general, better understand Nevi and what it means as like big picture. Um, I also wanted to show just in case people are tuning into the video version of the podcast, but this map of the supercharger locations that is on this um, like public tableau, tableau for that site that we mentioned. So this is where they're tracking these magic docs. And so you have these filters over here and we can even filter them out and see where the magic docs are. But this is a lot of information being put together to really you know, map out the Tesla network, not by Tesla, but by volunteers. Yeah, it's crazy. And they don't even have ads or anything on it. They're literally just doing it because they want to for free as volunteers. I, right. I think this is more data realistically than a lot of charging networks have about their own assets. And this is put together by just strangers to the network, just building it. Yeah, it's pretty, uh, pretty impressive um, is one word to put it. And um, so speaking of like, you know, th them documenting these sites on the map, we haven't, do you see kind of, reasoning on why the specific sites that have popped up would have the magic dock over others? Do you think it's like they're doing maintenance runs so they might as well update it? Um, how do you think Tesla's going about picking these sites? Does there seem to be any rhyme or reason? Uh, 
not really with the exception of Colorado. So the Colorado Energy Office actually announced their awards of some of their uh, funding program that they ran somewhat recently. And the Montrose Colorado site was one of them that was awarded to Tesla and it's been spotted with magic docs at it. So I suspect that Tesla probably put in an extremely compelling bid for that program because, I mean, Magic Dock has to cost significantly less than a brand new installation of chargers, uh, even if Tesla is making a huge profit on it because they name their own price, they make it themselves. Uh, but they likely got funding to install those. And there's a whole list of other sites in Colorado that Tesla got funding for. So I suspect we're going to be seeing quite a few in Colorado. The rest of them, it's kind of hard to say. The New York ones make sense just as a test corridor because the Buffalo Gigafactory is up there. Uh, but otherwise, I can't find a rhyme or reason, but maybe as we start seeing more and more pop up, there'll be some pattern to them. Yeah, we've seen people tweeting them, um, like tweeting at us and, and Kyle and Out of Spec in general saying when they cited them. So keep that up. We'd love to see the trends here. Um, and overall, I, I, you know, it's kind of like a little secret movement or silent movement behind the scenes to keep these magic docs coming onto the network. Um, I think it's, you know, in general, it's it's, of course, curious, but also, I mean, Tesla chargers or Tesla drivers can still charge on the chargers and now it just opens it up. So if you have a CCS, you know, car that you can pull up and charge on the Tesla network, even maybe if you don't have an adapter yet, um, if you're waiting for that. So I think, of course, you know, more inclusivity and equity in terms of charging is great. I don't know how Tesla users feel with more people on their network, but, you know, I think the more the merrier, merrier let's share. What do you think? Yeah, I mean, I I did a 400 mile trip this past weekend just to go and check out the supercharger network, see if I could find any magic docs. That was kind of the side quest of it. And I was the only one charging at almost every single charger I went to, or maybe there were one or two other people charging. And I mean, this was on a Saturday on a pretty busy corridors on the Northeast or not Northeast, East Coast. And it's just really not a problem outside of California or maybe some very select locations that are overrun. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think in California, they ha they always have kind of their own circumstance going on, especially with how many EVs they have on the road and just the population in general. But that's interesting, you know, not too busy. And you were on a bit of an Easter egg hunt. And did you find any? I did not. But today I did find Tesla actually doing a retrofit of the PLC modem. So they're having to do retrofits everywhere to support mm. cars that will be using NAX because NAX uses a different protocol than what Tesla's used to communicate with superchargers. So Max uses basically the CCS protocol to communicate, whereas Tesla's use a proprietary protocol to communicate with superchargers. So Tesla's doing this huge campaign across all their sites to actually install those. But yeah. that's not necessarily overlapping with Magic Doc, contrary to what people might suspect. But mm -hmm. there's a lot of sites kind of going offline for a full day for them to do these retrofits. And then they just come back online seemingly unchanged, but they are installing DC meters. There's new stickers on the sites that have gotten that retrofit. Mm, okay. So there's a couple efforts across the network that we're seeing from Tesla, although it's a bit anecdotal, anecdotally, right? It's what we're seeing. It's what some viewers are seeing. So I'll be interested to see if Tesla does come out with anything to say about, to speak more to their plans about the magic dock rolling out, or, you know, if any news would come along, but we're not exactly sure, but we are seeing it happen. New sites coming up. Yeah. Yeah, I like to say that Tesla does cool things when Elon is distracted. And I think uh, this is a pretty good example of that. Yeah, what's he distracted with now? Well, just Twitter as a whole still, or X as it's called now. A, a relatively constant distraction, perhaps. Yes. Well, is there anything else you want to add about the Magic Docs? I'm looking forward to using one. I still haven't used one yet because there aren't any in the Carolinas and I haven't had a chance to go up to New York. Yeah, in case anyone is tuning in, I'm just going to show a little bit about, or a little image of um, this tweet about what a magic doc looks like. You know, it's a bit thicker right here. Um, you can also go to that site we mentioned, apparently, you know, they have the list of magic docs. And additionally, um, oh, I'm not sharing the screen. Now yeah. you can see it. And so here you can see a Tesla charger looks almost normal, but then right here you can see it's a bit bigger where that adapter will be. So keep an eye out for your, uh, at your charging station to see what's possible or your local Tesla charging station, whether or not you have a Tesla. 
And um, also you can, yeah, use that interface that we were talking about, all those data points. And then tell me again, Brandon, how you could tell on the app if, uh, or right, would someone have to download the Tesla app to look for Tesla chargers, even if they don't have a Tesla car to find these magic docs? Uh, to use them, yes, they have to download the Tesla app, make an account and go to the charging on Tesla function. But you can see just the map uh, for visual purposes at tesla.com slash find us. And then there's a filter for charge by non-Tesla or superchargers for non-Teslas. Let me see what exactly it's called. Yeah, superchargers open to non-Tesla is the filter on that map. Nice. So this map has a lot of, you know, resources, especially if you want to do your own uh, personal individual sleuthing on the EV network as, you know, we all like to do. Um, so <laughs> yeah. thanks for hopping on today to talk about this. Um, look forward, forward to having you on the podcast more, chatting about Nevi or whatever you're up to um, with all the interesting work that you're doing. And you can find Brandon um, at Brandon Flash. I can see right there your handle on um, X. And then also you have your YouTube channel as well. Yes. Yeah. And I actually just did a video about Tesla's largest site east of Texas with 40 stalls on I-95. 40 stalls. Yeah. That's no pretty magic. good. No, no magic docs. Uh, did you get to see the, um, what is that? The mega charger yet? For the... I haven't seen it in person yet though. Semis? Yeah. I just want to see the just the actual size of it. I've been told it's like seven feet tall. Yeah, that is a that's a big one. Um, <laughs> well, yeah. Thanks again for tuning in. Uh, we'll see you again next time. And thanks everyone for uh, watching the podcast or listening from wherever you are. Of course, if you have any interesting stories that you want us to cover, you can email us at podcast at out of spec studios or tweet us, and you can tweet me or. Mention me on X at hey underscore Francie. We'll see you next time. Thanks.